Today, I'm gonna to be ranking my least favorite to favorite base brands in the price point of $600 to $300. Now, before we get started, I just wanna let you know, I've already done this for guitars. You can check out that video down below in the description. And I wanna explain some of the rules and rankings of this video series. The first thing is, is that to be on this list, you have to be importing an instrument in the United States currently as making this video. The other thing is, once I've kind of made my list of instruments that I think make the lists, I go ahead and rank them in categories by giving them point scores. They're not pitted against each other. So what I'll do real quick is give you some highlights of some of the things I'm scoring. Fit and finish their looks, their brand value, features, playability, product variety, whether or not I've had to deal with heavy fret issues or repairs with these instruments. Those are just some of the categories. And then I add up all the calculations. None of the brands are pitted against each other. So that's not something that's factored in. Each product, I will tell you at least what it scored the least in or the highest in whatever's most relevant. At number 30, we have PV. PV was really hurt in this category of brand value. They were a brand that I really respected for a long time. And to be honest with you, they've kind of lost their way. Cirrus bases were some of the most highest regarded bases, especially the American made ones, but import ones had value too. And now no one seems interested in them, including me, even though one of my favorite bases I've ever owned was a PV Cirrus base. Number 29 is Traveler. Now Traveler, I actually thought they would do better because I like the travel bases way more than the travel guitars. But what hurt them in this category is their looks. Number 28 is Aria. Aria and Aria Pro. Again, another brand that I think is really good, but their brand value is nothing. No one knows who they are. So there's no resale. There's no real instinct to buy them. And it's one of the things that hurt them the most. Brand value was their lowest category. Number 27 was Michael Kelly. Now, Michael Kelly is a really interesting brand. Like I said, when I did the guitar video, it's owned by Sam Ash. I think they're making some pretty good stuff. However, there is almost next to no variety of products in this price point of $600 to $300. Number 26, MTD, which stands for Michael Tobias Design. If you guys know Michael Tobias, he made amazing basses and then eventually Gibson owning Tobias. And I think they've not only given up on the brand, the new Kramers look like Tobias's. So it's really crazy. Number 25 is Epiphone. And again, Epiphone, another brand I think really highly of, but again, in the base market, it's almost non-existent of the variety of products. And that's what they scored the absolute lowest on. Number 24 is Hoffner. Hoffner makes an import base that's made in China. It's a really good base. If you want the Hoffner Beetle bass sound. Number 23 is Gretsch. Now again, another brand I really like and respect. However, variety of products was next to nothing in the base category. In fact, they just don't offer a whole lot. Number 22 is Vintage. Vintage the brand, like vintage guitars and vintage basses. What they scored the lowest is, is fit and finish and repair issues. I've done so much fret work, so when I was scoring them, they scored really low for fit and finish. Number 21 is Steinberger. Now, Steinberger was really spirit by Steinberger, and at this point, I think they should ditch that whole idea of having the sub-spirit brand of Steinberger. Just go ahead and put it at Steinberger. It's owned by Gibson. It's sold under the basically the same uh, business model as Kramer guitars. Number 20 is Warwick Rock Bass, and one of the things that scored high was brand value. What I mean by that is they used to be called Rock Bass and they actually decided to call them Warwick. It's kind of cool sometimes to have a name brand instrument, especially at a more affordable price point. Um, their offerings in this price range are a little limited. Features are definitely limited. And that's one of the things I heard them is there's not a lot of features on these bases, but I like them even though they don't offer a lot of colors and options. Number 19 is Dane Electro. Now, Dane Electro uh, make their instruments in Korea, which is really cool. It's a good factory, a good quality fit and finish. One of my favorite basses from this series is the Longhorn bass. I definitely recommend it. It's one of the most recorded basses in history. However, again, the offerings are almost non-existent in the bass category. They're really a guitar company, so can't really blame them for that. Number 18 is Dean. Now Dean Guitars is really cool in the fact that it has, again, a lot of variety products, especially in this price point. Uh, very cool looking. I rated them high for that. Fit and finish issues are always plagued with, always plagues Dean, and that's where they scored the lowest. Number 17 is Eastwood and Airline Instruments. And Eastwood and Airline, again, another brand I like. They make these bases in Korea. Again, another great manufacturing uh, place to make these instruments. Brand value is really good. What hurt them was, I don't even remember anymore. I gotta look. It was uh, product variety. That's what it killed him. There's not a lot of products. Number 16 is Jackson. And I hate to say this, that this, I thought they would make the top 10 when I was scoring them. I was thinking they're gonna score really high because I was really thinking like, I love the way they look. I love the new models. They, they have good fit and finish. But what killed Jackson for the, on the list was when I was looking in my repair history, man, I've really worked on a lot of Jackson bases. And so that really scored him down low. Although I have to make a caveat for this because I did it on the guitars too. I think they've been improving over the last couple of years. So even 
though the whole of them hasn't been that great, I think they're getting better and better. Number 15 is Sterling by Music Man. And one of the things I love about these basses, if you want that Music Man sound, that big punchy sound, you can get it with these basses. They actually are priced very well. You can get the two pickup version or the one pickup version with really no price difference. Number 14 is Takai. Takai is a great brand and most of the bases, even in this price category, are made in Japan. Very good quality stuff. In fact, their only holdback was some of the features, very limited, nothing really exciting in the lineup, but definitely not a lot of variety at this price point. Number 13 is LTD. Variety of products was next to nothing in the base category. Like I said, I really like these brands. This isn't that the, any of these brands are bad. I just have to rank them. That's where they ranked. Number 12 is Fender. I know, how does the biggest bass company in the world not rank number one on a best to worst bass brands list? Well, it's because Fender doesn't even really exist in this category. Between the three and $600 range of basses, Fender only makes one, and it's the Fender Mustang bass. And that's a great bass. That's what scored them really high. Fit and finish was great, quality's great, brand name's great, but variety was a one. So it just really tanked their score down. So that's why they didn't make it. Number 11 is Tajima. Tajima, again, another brand. I love the way they, they look. I love the idea of the brand. A lot of good variety, a lot of cool colors and models, but brand value, they're just not a known brand that really hurts them for resale, really hurts them for understanding what you're buying. Number 10 is Harley Benton. But I gotta tell you, Harley Benton, not surprised they're in the top 10. Very good quality for the price point. You can't beat some of the prices they have. Number nine is GNL Tribute. Now, what's interesting is GNL on my guitar list ranks so so high was in the top five. Number eight was Yamaha. I love Yamaha basses more than Yamaha guitars. So again, when I was scoring things out, sometimes when I look at the total number, I go, huh. But it's really funny how if you really take the entire brand into, into issue, you come up with a different idea. Number seven is a brand you probably don't know. It's Sire. Sire is by Marcus Miller, my favorite bass player, and they are really cool instruments. And they have a lot of offerings in this price point. Now they have more in the over $600 price point, but, but man, a good, a good amount of instruments. One of the things that's great about Sire, if you have small hands, they have one of the smallest necks you're gonna find. Number six is Court from Court Tech. Court basses are great. In fact, much better than the guitars. So they didn't really get low a low score on anything, but they got some overall average scores on a lot of categories. So I think Court, what hurt them is they're very average in the way that they present themselves. So they got an average score, which get put them high above a lot of other brands, but lower than the top five. And now we're in the top five. So we, of course, you probably already know who's gonna be in the top five by process elimination. Number five is Squire. Of course, Squire. Who's gonna dominate the bass industry besides Fender? It's gonna be Squire. I scored them on the lower side on some fit and finish issues. I've scored them a little higher on their brand recognition. Overall, they got a great score. And I think as a brand, as Squire is a branded basis, it's a far superior brand of instruments than the guitars. When I think Squire guitars, I think they're good guitars. When I think Squire basses, I think giggable instruments. I know tons of friends who literally gig on Squires and they're just as good. They hold up really great. Number four is Spectre Basses, and I have to say, these are some of the best, coolest basses I've ever played. They got scored a little low because they don't have a huge variety of stuff, but fit and finish has always been good. I always like the way they sound. They feel great, and they look great. One of the things I give them points for is the brand brand equation, and that's a cool thing if you're on a specific budget where you don't feel like you get to own a premium brand. Spectre's a premium brand, so you get to own one. Number three is Fujigen. Now Fujigen has a very few options on this uh, platform, very few models, but they're made in Japan. They are fantastic. In fact, in all the categories where it counts, repair, fit and finish, they got tens. Number two is Ibanez, which is interesting because Ibanez guitar is rated not even in my top 30, but Ibanez basses, I don't think there's much better basses out there for the money. I can pick up an Ibanez bass for $300 anywhere and it will sound and play great. In fact, Ibanez almost dominates the bass market with the amount of variety of models, its fit and finish, its quality, its features, its looks. You can buy an Ibanez bass in the $600 to $300 range that looks as good as anything that's $1,000. Number one, here it is. It's Schecter basses. When I think of quality, I definitely think of Schecter. In fact, what was really cool on this one was it almost got all tens. I'd like to also point out that when I was scoring things, Schecter won by a large margin. When I looked at my total score, I was shocked how many tens I gave them. Fit and finish, quality, looks, brand recognition, brand value, resale value, every category I could put at this, they were just killing it. Their weakest score was features. And to be honest with you, I just put that as a slightly above par. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed my list. It was really fun to make. If you guys disagree with some stuff or agree with some stuff, let me know in the comments down below. Always curious to see what everybody's thoughts are. These are just my opinions and thoughts. And of course, the whole purpose of this is just to make some entertainment video and talk about some great brands. Uh, we're very lucky. This is the best time to, to be into music when it comes to the variety of products you can get and brands out there. They're making some great stuff and it definitely has some great prices. If you'd like to see a base video of this above $600 or below $300, just put that in the comments down below and I'll go ahead and make that video as well. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.